Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and we're at the start of yet another weekly vlog. This weekly vlog, we've just apparently thrown my TBR out the window, like completely. So on Sunday, I was looking around for ages for Kingdom of the Cursed. Now I looked in Forbidden Planet and I looked in two different Waterstones up in central London and I still could not find it and it kind of bothered me because I read A Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco and I liked it but didn't enjoy it as much as Stalking Jack the Ripper and I was very like I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with this series but then I decided you know what I do want to get it I really like Kerry Maniscalco's work her Stalking Jack the Ripper series is one of my favorites and I was interested to see how this story was going to develop the first book gave me very much like Carvel vibes but from the second book onwards because we are following two sisters, they are witches. Now one of them gets brutally murdered and the other one sets about to find out who's done it and get revenge and this also means that she ends up meeting the seven princes of hell who represent the seven deadly sins and that just very much reminded me of the fates from the Carvel series. It was very similar setup where she went around from different prince to go through these different trials and stuff to try and find out some truth kind of similar to what teller goes through in legendary i thought it was really good i did like it again didn't think it was as good as her first series i think that was more because i was expecting something more similar to stalking jack the ripper instead of something closer to carvel apparently i still really wanted to get this book because i kept hunting around for it on sunday and I couldn't find it anywhere. So instead, yesterday, after I'd wrapped up the vlog, I decided to pop into my local Waterstones and they had it. They only had one left and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get this. I'm just gonna do it. And um, I've ditched my TBR completely because I've now read the first 160 pages because apparently that's a thing. I was literally just going to read like the first chapter on my lunch break and then I was just really intrigued and I just haven't put it down since. So yesterday evening I spent quite a bit of time reading this instead of carrying on with my actual October TBR but we're just gonna ignore that because apparently that's just out the window now so yeah. But this I am really enjoying. We're seeing more of Amelia and Prince Wrath and their development together and I like that. Amelia's just entered the realm of hell and she's had to go through this tunnel where it's trying to get her to respond to the emotions of different sins which was very interesting as she was going through that and she is now staying at Prince Wrath's castle until she gets allowed to go to see the Prince of Pride. So it's very interesting, I really like the setup, it's really intriguing to see this world, how cold it is and everything. It's interesting to see Amelia trying to unravel things about what's happened to her sister and trying to discover more about herself as a witch as well as Amelia and Rath's relationship to one another and how that's developing. I'm really really enjoying this. I think it has perfect vibes for this time of year because of the fact that we do have witches, we have princes of hell, there is a lot that's going on. So I actually think this is quite a good pick for this time of year. So I am very much enjoying this. I think I'm definitely more invested and it's changed its course. So the first book felt very much like Stephanie Gabar's Carvel series but now this book kind of has a feel of its own almost kind of kind of reminded me of A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mars and that whole setup with Rysand and when he takes Feyre down to the underbelly of the Night Court it kind of just gives me vibes from different things that I've read but I really like it because we have the focus on witches and princes of hell and different sins so it's very very good really enjoying it um yeah so i am definitely going to be continuing on this it does mean my tbr has been thrown out the window i still have seven books to read on that tbr do i have time to be chucking this book in no but i don't care at the same time so that's fine we're gonna make it work fingers crossed i'll still get through all the seven books on my tbr very unlikely because this is 400 pages and was not an edition that i needed but I am very much enjoying it. So yes, excited to be reading that. Although I am staying over at my partner's house tonight or meant to be. So because of that, to save me carrying around a big hardback, I will be taking one of the books off my TBR and that's going to be Sign of the Four by Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the second book to read in the order of the Sherlock Holmes books. 
and I'm excited for it. I don't want to know too much about it because they're really short books. This one is literally 127 pages. It is really, really small. So I'm hoping that I will be able to get a good way through this, get that finished. And then that's another book off my TBR. So that's the plan anyway. We're going to continue reading Kingdom of the Cursed when I'm at home, which also I really like this cover. It's really nice combination of black and blue. And then I'm going to be bringing Sign of the Fall with me to work and to my partner's house. And hopefully I will have that finished up very soon. So yeah, that's what we're reading this week. We have dived off the TBR a little bit, but I mean, it just can't be helped. October and September are such great months for books being published and I just can never help it. I really, really can't. Certain books by certain authors, when they come out, I just want to read them straight away. And Karen Maniscalco is definitely one of them. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it so far, so. Okay, well, now that this vlog has actually started, we should probably get to work because of course I have work. Do I know what I'm doing with the rest of my week? No, not really but I think we're gonna be getting some filming done out the way, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, right, I'm gonna go. I hope your week is going well so far and I will catch up with you in a little while. Well, I'm almost done with Kingdom of the Wicked. I have about 150 pages left to go on this. And I have to admit, I much preferred the first part of this book to what I've just read. I don't know, I just feel like it's getting a little bit repetitive and the relationship between Amelia and Wrath, I just feel like was developing really well. And now it just feels a bit stagnant. I can also see where it's going and it just seems so predictable. And it's a bit of a shame because this is kind of what happened when I was reading Kingdom of the Wicked because I, again, really liked the setup of that. And then it got towards the end of the book and it just kind of started losing me a little bit. It's a shame because I really want to like this. There's a lot of things that I do like about it. But then there are other things that I'm just not as keen on in this. And I think it is just more that repetition that keeps going on. I like the fact that Amelia is trying to explore how she feels, kind of push out against the boundaries of her time and how women aren't meant to enjoy things like pleasure and how men are able to enjoy this and even be commended for it but women is meant to be more virtuous and as a result not allowed to enjoy these things that it is considered a sin but it's repeated quite a lot. That's something that I'm having a bit of a problem with because I want it to be a little bit more free-flowing and her feeling like she can push past this but at the minute it just feels very much like the same thing is being repeated again and again and even Wrath is a bit confusing because he's starting to become a lot more withdrawn which is as the further the book goes the more that's becoming and it seems very all over the place. So I would say I really, again, I really like the concept and everything, but it's still not matching up to her first series. I feel like the character development in that was much better, much cleaner than in this book. And some of that is because the characters are a bit confused. You don't know fully what's going on. You're trying to uncover all these secrets. But I also feel like we have lost track a little bit of why Amelia even went to the underworld in the first place. You know, everything that's surrounding her sister's death, what she's trying to uncover. There isn't much going on with that, which is a bit of a shame as well, because I just feel like that's a missed opportunity. So yeah, I'm undecided. I, like I say, I still have 150 pages to go. It's just the last little bit that I read wasn't my favorite, but we'll see how the rest of it goes. But that's how I'm progressing with that. I have also made tiny, tiny progress with Sign of the Four. I've literally only read 20 pages and this was meant to be reading while I'm on my lunch break, but I've literally been able to do that once. I also didn't go to my partner's house, so I didn't bring this with me then either. So I haven't actually made much progress with this, but I can say 100% I'm loving it. It's so good. I'm absolutely just ugh, getting back into the classic writing style. It just, it's like a warm hug to me. I absolutely love it. I love the writing. I love everything about it. It just, warms my heart. It's so, so good. In this one, we are meeting a lady, which I believe if we're following what happens in 
like the further films if this is what they've taken from it ends up being Watson's wife she has come to Baker Street with a bit of a mystery on her hands every year for the last six years she has received this pearl from an anonymous person she doesn't know what it's about her father went missing 10 years previously to that it's all a bit confusing with stuff and so Holmes is of course intrigued and he is wanting to definitely help solve this case and so they go along with her and that's where I'm up to I actually really liked this book because it does talk about the fact that Holmes is addicted to morphine and cocaine. I like how it's questioning that and then Sherlock Holmes reasoning for why he's even taking it. I think it's really really interesting. I didn't expect it to actually address it in these books. I always thought that him being on drugs was something they had added to like TV series and films and things like that but actually no it is actually specified in the books which I wasn't expecting but I think it's really interesting. It definitely adds to who he is as someone that just gets bored very easily who can be a bit manic and you're seeing Watson and his disapproval of this and the reason why he disapproves of it and I think it's it's interesting I mean it was literally only mentioned for the first couple pages but it was very good and how Sherlock Holmes justifies it by going well I'm bored nothing's capturing my attention and then this case pops up and he's like okay well no second dose of cocaine for me today and it's just like okay so obviously you do have trigger warnings of drug usage but the way it's written is not condoning this behaviour at all. It's literally going this is what Sherlock Holmes does and that it's not good, that you're not meant to be doing it. Watson very much is apparent to it. So I, I just liked it. I thought it was really unexpected. I didn't expect to start off the books. That's what it starts off with. So yeah, I'm I'm so intrigued. I actually really, really want to put Kingdom of the Cursed on the back burner so I can actually finish this because I'm just so much it <sighs> enjoying it so much more. It's just so good. I really love the writing style and I think that's what it is. The writing style in like in classic books just captures me a bit more. Whereas in Kingdom of the Cursed it's not so much the writing style it's to do with like the character development because that's what I like in books I like character development but it's just losing that steam for me which is a shame because I feel like there's so much potential with this book and with everything that she's doing especially because it has progressed more like in terms of world building and stuff but I just feel like plot and character development is now getting a bit lost at this point in the book which is a shame. But yeah, so I am hoping, because today's my day off, that I will get Simon of the Four finished, because I'm really, really feeling it, and then read a bit more of Kingdom of the Cursed, but we'll see what I actually get up to. As you saw from my little snippet, I did a bit of home decor shopping. I've mentioned few weeks ago that I wanted to redo up my room, that it wasn't feeling like me. Part of that was changing this bookshelf from red to white, which I do prefer, but I have to admit, everything in my room is white and I just get so fed up with it and I don't want that. I want my room to feel like a proper dark, foresty, cosy feel to it. So I've got, I showed you before, but like these dark green cushions and that's separated with a pink cushion as well. I then got a nice dark green throw from my bed, again, just to continue with that. And I really like how my bed's looking. Also got some more bed sheets and stuff. Then I've also got myself a big mirror because I haven't had a mirror in here and I've moved my hanging plant. So instead my hanging plant is over here. Let me quickly show you. So it now hangs up by my window now which is a little bit better for it I think because it definitely gets a bit more light hanging there but we'll see so I've just kind of moving stuff around and I'm also deciding between paint samples because I've decided I've had enough of all the white and I want to paint everything and just redo it all so we have a lighter almost like a sage green color and then we also have a darker green color which again you would have seen little paint samples of now that they're dry. I am leaning more towards the dark colour even though I feel like it will make my room feel a little bit smaller because obviously it will all be dark colours now. I do think I'm just going to prefer it and it will go with that darker woodland foresty vibe whereas the lighter colour is definitely more springtime colours but then doesn't go with the actual decor that I've already bought for my room. So I'm definitely feeling more like the darker one, but I'm literally gonna be painting everything. So my bookshelves, 
This is my wardrobe, which you always see to the side here, but this is actually my wardrobe. And even this little shelf bit, which again, you always see my videos. So this is all gonna change color. And I'm also going to be spray painting the drawers because the drawers are this blue and white stripe, which just makes me feel like it should be in the bathroom rather than in my room. So I'm gonna be spray painting those. So I've got some gray spray paint. So that's gonna go with that. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. So I want to properly decorate my room. So next week I do have a bit of extra time off. So that's what I'm planning to do. So today we need to prepare for all of that. So I need to go through my room, declutter. I also need to get the filming done that I was planning to do next week try and get a head start of that today so I can just move all of that out of the way and then it frees me up to actually paint because I do genuinely think it's going to take me three days because I have quite a lot to paint in my room. I also want to paint the bookshelf that's over there and I've also got a chest of drawers which I'm thinking I may paint as well but I'll leave that to last in case that's a bit too much because it's a wooden chest of drawers anyway so it might work and I might just change the actual handles on the drawers but we'll see once everything else has been painted because my desk is more like this wooden look anyway so those two might go well together but again we're gonna decide so it's definitely something that I've been putting off for ages and keep thinking about and I've just thought you know what I've got the time next week I'm just gonna do it and go for it and I know that that's the sort of look I want to go for which is more green nature foresty and just relaxation i will still have pops of pink and things like that because i went more white and pink but it's just not who i am and i don't feel relaxed when i'm in my room reading which i'm in my room a lot so i really want it to feel relaxing but i have rambled for quite a lot about home decor and redecorating but you guys are going to see that all properly next week most likely of me actually doing all of that so yeah so i'm gonna stop boring you with all of that stuff i will get on with my day Day, try and get as much filming done as I can and hopefully finish sign of the four that's the plan for today we'll see if we actually stick to it um right I best get going then morning we have had a busy couple of days so on Thursday I did manage to actually film and edit three videos which I was really really pleased with we also obviously was finalizing paint choices for my room I have actually started painting which I started yesterday evening I am so excited for the color I, it does need another paint and then obviously I'll be making my way through all of this it's so exciting I'm so happy with it and hopefully Sunday we'll be getting the rest of this painting as well we'll see how far I managed to get in terms of reading though I did finish the sign of the four by Arthur Conan Doyle on Thursday this came out as five stars absolutely loved it though it was a really engaging story this one very gruesome depictions at times as well I also like how these stories are structured because it followed the same as the first book which is where you have the mystery throughout the first part of this book and on the second part so the last 30 pages or so we were getting the villain's reasoning as to why he did all what all of what he did and it just works so so well it makes it a really well-rounded story there's no questions at the end of it everything gets covered perfectly i really enjoyed this i was right mary who is the main protagonist in this one who comes to them with the mystery does end up marrying watson and yes very happy with that 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 all went according to plan but I'm actually just, I'm really loving it. I love this. It made me miss classics a lot and has made me decide that November is going to be a classics reading month for me because I just love the writing style. I love everything about it. So yeah, five stars. Really, really pleased with this. But I haven't actually read any more of Kingdom of the Cast. As I said earlier, I'm just not been feeling it at the moment. I just feel like the plot and the characters just aren't developing at all, which is so frustrating. And other people that I've seen that have actually finished this book have said yeah the plot wasn't their favorite 
but they loved like Wrath as a character, which you know what I can agree with. I like Wrath, but I also want a bit more than just that. So this is on the back burner for now. I will pick it up when I'm just really tired and just when it's like easy to follow because it definitely fulfills that. But at the moment, I just wasn't feeling it. So instead, on Thursday, I started Ninth House by Leah Bardugo. And this is a book that I've had my reservations about. One, because I read Shadow and Bone by Leah Bardugo, her first Grishaverse trilogy. And I liked the first book, but I wasn't keen on the rest of the trilogy. I just didn't like the way that developed at all. So I was hesitant because I wasn't sure if it was just her writing that I didn't get on with or whether it was just that trilogy. And also because this is classed as dark academia and that's something that I've had a love-hate relationship with, mainly on the hate part because I would love to love it but I just haven't found any that really tick that boat for me. But I have to admit I'm enjoying this. I'm on page 80 and we are following our main character Alex who has been accepted into Yale University even though she didn't even apply and that's because she has this ability to see ghosts and she can see them all the time and in colour, which is extremely rare. They've never heard of that before. And the reason why it's so important is part of Yale, there is a secret society where they basically carry out experiments on people to divine future things. So things like the stock market and things like that. And it's what basically keeps the rich people rich. And so Alex is enlisted in this subsection where they have to keep an eye on what they're doing and make sure that they don't accidentally murder somebody or let something foul into the world and so Alex being able to see ghosts all the time without the help of these potions and stuff that most people have to take is such a huge advantage that even though she has this very grey background they kind of overlooked that. And that's why I like Alex as a character, actually. She's very intriguing and you don't know what's happened in her background. You've heard little tidbits, but there's enough there that I'm really intrigued. We have two timelines going on. We have the timeline of when Alex first arrived and she meets her mentor, Darlington, who is showing her the ropes on what she has to do. And she's also intrigued because she's been seeing these ghosts for years and now she can learn a few tricks and stuff to keep herself feeling a bit more safe from them because she has always thought that she was going crazy and now she actually is validated. Then you have the second timeline which is where Darlington seems to have disappeared and Alex is trying to run things on her own which she's feeling very overwhelmed about because she hasn't been trained for that long and I don't know I just really like it there's just been a murder so we have a few things going on we have the mystery of where Darlington is we have the murder that's just happened and how that all connects and we have the intrigue behind Alex as a character and what's happened to her because you know something big and bad has happened to her in the past. So yeah, I'm loving this. I think it's really, really good so far. The first part of this book has been very info dumpy, I will admit. It's been very heavy handed, but considering this is a 500 page book, I do kind of expect that. Sometimes it can be done really well, so it's not so noticeable. This time it was a bit heavy handed, but you're just getting all the information about Yale and about these different societies, why they were founded and things like that. So it is a bit heavy handed, but it's also Alex's enrollment when you get all of that info dump in so it kind of works as well because I feel like when you do have that first day at school you do get a lot of information thrown at you so it's kind of similar so it does work in a way but I have noticed some people that don't like that but for me it doesn't bother me too much. So yeah I plan on reading more of this over the weekend I really didn't read this at all yesterday because yesterday I was at work then we had Friday Night Magic which as I said before is a card game that me and my partner play that we're now able to play with other people so it's just been a good time. I really enjoyed that. And then I came home and instead of reading and getting ready for bed, I decided to start painting my wardrobe. I'm so excited about, there's still a few bits left to do. So depending on what I do this evening, whether I'm seeing my partner or not, will depend on how much painting I get done. Because if I'm seeing my partner, I won't get any painting done. But if I'm not seeing him, I can hopefully finish up my wardrobe and then tomorrow make a good start on all of this. But we'll see how it goes. So yeah, very excited. It's been so, so busy this week, but I've enjoyed it so much and it's going to be another busy week next week, even though I've got the time off, but just with like redecorating. But yeah, anyway, I have rambled as usual for way too long, so I do need to get to work. So we best get going and um, yeah, we'll see what we get up to and how much I managed to get painted, which is going to be great. <laughs>
as you can see, we have redecorated. I am absolutely loving it. It kind of made me laugh because I was editing this vlog a bit yesterday in between layers of this all drying and I had said how I was going to save it for next week's vlog because I have the time off and um, yeah, that just did not happen at all. Saturday evening I did go to my partner's house and we just relaxed but he had work yesterday for 12 hours so we had to be up really early so I was back home just after half past seven in the morning and I was originally going to have a nap but I also just thought you know what I'm normally up at eight anyway what's the point I might as well just start the day and the plan was just to finish painting my wardrobe but obviously that expanded quite a lot. I'm just, I'm loving it. I so prefer it. It took eight hours yesterday of doing it all because everything needed two to three coats on everything and then obviously waiting for the different layers to dry and actually putting my books back on the shelves. It was so, so good. I even spray painted this little stand that I normally keep this lot on. We spray painted the drawers grey, which I'd said I was going to do and I much prefer it. It just looks so much better. So yeah, it's really made me happy. I still have one bookshelf left paint which is the one across from my room that you see on my Sunday videos. I still have that to do and I'm thinking I will probably do that tomorrow as I am off for four days after today. That's the plan. I'm really going to enjoy it but obviously you'll be seeing that in next week's vlog. I still haven't picked up Kingdom of the Cursed yet, I'm just not feeling it and it was really interesting actually editing this vlog and seeing my initial thoughts about this book and how much I really liked it, promised that it was showing, how excited I was for it and then the slump that I've just hit with it and it's literally just because it hasn't progressed anywhere and it's just this weird repetition cycle and I expected a bit more especially with like these weird skulls that kept appearing that were saying messages in her sister's voice who's passed away. It was so intriguing and now there's just none of that and I'm just like oh. So it's just a shame. So I mean I will finish it this month, it just won't be yet. But I did yesterday while I was waiting for things to dry and stuff read a bit more of Ninth House. I have just over 200 pages left and I really really like this. I was very hesitant as I said going into this book but now that I'm halfway it's just so good. So we are following Alex as she attends Yale University and she has to oversee these different societies as they meddle with supernatural forces as she's got to basically bodyguard everything and make sure nothing goes awry. Now she's been told that greys, which are the ghosts, that's how they're referred to in this world, can't interact with humans. Like they're just not able to touch you or things like that. But Alex has been assaulted several times by ghosts in the past. She is understandably very, very annoyed when she realises that there is a simple way to get rid of them and that's to say something that refers to death because they don't like reminders that they are dead. And she is furious because she spent her whole life struggling with these ghosts being assaulted by them. They've just watched from afar and not actually helped her or taught her how she can handle it until she comes to Yale University. So that was really interesting and I like how she's dealing with that but also at the same time happy that she is at Yale with this chance to put her life back on track. We also have quite a few different mysteries going on because you have the mystery of the girl that's been murdered. It seems to be so much more complex than what it actually is and there are ties to several of the different societies within Yale and then you also have what's happened to Darlington because he genuinely has disappeared and they don't know if they can get him back. And then of course everything that's still surrounding Alex, who she actually is, why she's able to see the greys the way she can. I'm really really enjoying it. I think it's really good. I love a good secret society and a murder mystery and everything going on like that. I really really enjoy that aspect of this. So yeah this might be one that I can officially say is referenced as Dark Academia that I have actually really, really enjoyed. Also, it goes really well with the new setup of my room with the green shelves. But as I said, I do have work today and it is a Monday, so that does mean that we're going to wrap up the vlog here. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. In the comments, do put, let me know what you think of this new green because I'm loving it. And do you guys like having every so often just being able to do a massive redecoration? I think especially after this year that's gone on, a lot of people have been feeling like just redecorating things because it's been such a stagnant period 
period of time and now things look like they're gonna slowly slowly be getting back to normal and so it's nice to signify that with a change in your environment so or at least it is for me so let me know if you agree with that and if you have been doing any redecorating or a planning to what sort of color schemes do you tend to go for I'm always always interested not that I'm going to repaint this anytime soon because it took absolutely forever but yeah as I said I do need to go so social media links everything will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next video. Thank you.